Okay, so I'm going to be doing a timing chain and tensioner replacement in my 2002 Honda Civic Si. It's got the K20 A3 engine. The other day when I was dropping off my daughter, I, st um, I dropped her off, started up the car, and then about half a block away um, at a stoplight, the car just shuts off. And then I turn it back on, it cranks a long time, it starts, but it, I, I have to keep gas on it to, so that it doesn't die. So I limp it to work, I get my code reader that I have in the car at all times, and I get a P0341, P0301 through 4, and then P0300. So it's like a cam sensor code or crank sensor code along with the misfires. And from what I was reading up on this, it definitely seems like the timing chain either jumped or skipped, whatever you want to call it, the tensioner may have failed. So I was able to limp it home as long as I didn't let it idle without having the foot on the gas. It there was way down on power. Definitely VTEC wasn't working or anything like that. Um, but I was able to get it home. It wasn't rattling or anything like that, so I don't think I have any vent valves or anything along those lines. Um, but I can show you what happens when I go ahead and start it and it tries to idle. It's going to crank a while and you'll hear it just shut off after it turns on for a little bit. You can definitely see it's not starting up right, definitely not idling. Even when I put my foot on the gas, it's misfiring quite a bit, so the timing is definitely off. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right now, take the valve cover off and line it up to top dead center just so I can see how far off we got. I got new timing chain and tension I'm going to put in anyways, but I just want to verify what I more or less already know. I'm not really going to show how to change the valve cover because it's pretty self-explanatory. If you can't change the valve cover, I wouldn't recommend going to change the timing cover or timing chain and everything like that. Um, but basically, the cover comes off a couple of 12 millimeters or 10 millimeters, some 10 millimeters for the coil pack covers. Got a bunch of 10 millimeters for the valve cover, a couple of hoses and connectors that pop off. Really, not much to it. If you've done a valve cover, this will be nothing to you. Okay, so at this point, I've got the valve cover off. I got my wheel off. I've got a little cover there off. And so I can expose the. 19 millimeter crank bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it till it gets the top dead center. Then I'll look at how everything looks up top. It's going to be off, I'm sure. If not, I'll be shocked. But yeah, I'm going to get it that set up and I'll show you what we got. All right, so I've got a little bit of a dilemma with my theory here. So I got the valve cover off, got it top dead center. Up top, it looks good. I got nine links in between each um, timing dot up top on the cams, on the sprockets. So that looks good. Down on the crank, I don't think you'll be able to see it too well, but the timing mark is perfect there. And I, I don't see excessive slack on the chain. So I'm wondering if I'm kind of barking up the wrong tree here. Um, it might actually be like the solenoid that's right there, that guy. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off and See if I can do some testing on it. As you can see, it looks pretty rusty and whatnot, but that's just the outside, so it really shouldn't matter. But from what I'm seeing here, the chain doesn't appear to be off. I was expecting to see a jumped um, couple teeth or something along those lines. So we'll see. I'll pop that solenoid off there and then see what I find. Okay, so I got it a little more apart. I got it set to top dead center and seems pretty well spot on. I tried to check to see if the timing, I'm thinking maybe the the chain is stretched, so I popped off the little inspection cover and you can't see anything. I don't know how people say you can use that to measure out how much it's um, extended out, but there's, there's no way you can do it, on, at least on the EP3. I can't see it at all. Um, I might, I'm going to try to drop down the motor a little bit and see, but otherwise I might just go ahead and start taking this whole thing apart, change the chains anyways. I bought them already, I can't return them. So I may just continue on with the disassembly as much as I don't really want to. Okay, so I'm kind of skipping steps, but I've got this, this removal of this stuff here in another video. So I'll link that in the description. But right now I've got the engine mount off and the engine mount bracket off of the engine. You're going to need a couple of different wrenches. You're going to need like a ratcheting wrench as well as a, um, a ratchet, a couple extensions. There's You can get them 
there's a couple of them that were really tight, but you were still able to get them out. So most of those were 14 millimeters. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to go ahead and start taking off the timing cover bolts. Um, it looks like a real pain because you can, even with all this crap off, you can barely fit your hand up in here. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm kind of trying to make sure I get them all from the same spot and everything, but it looks like this one here was able to come out with a wrench. That one back there is going to be a ratcheting wrench. Or this one was a ratchet. That one will be a ratcheting wrench. And yeah, so I won't really show too much of this because really you can't see anything. I can barely see what the heck I'm doing. So yeah, I'll update you at the next step. I also got the crank pulley off. And for that, I used the Honda crank pulley tool holder there and wedged a breaker bar to the ground. And then I used my Harbor Freight um, Earthquake XT 20 volt impact. I tried doing it with just breaker bars by hand. It, it wasn't happening. Um, so the impact with a fully charged battery was able to get it off relatively quickly. All right, so, so far I've got seven bolts, seven 10 millimeter bolts up or off from up top. And these are all the same length so far. Basically all the ones that you can see from up top and reach. I had to use a combination of a ratchet and a regular 10 millimeter um, wrench to be able to get them off. Most of the time I just broke them loose with the wrenches and then had to take them off by hand, um, really shoving your hand real deep in there. It sucks. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, fingers start to get cramped after a little bit and everything, but I think I got all the ones I can get from up top. So there's seven. So I believe there's like 15 or so total. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the ones from the bottom. But really, you can kind of just see them. I'll show you once the cover is off which ones go where and everything. But so far, these top ones, I've been checking each time. Every one that comes out to make sure they're not different sizes. Because I know I read online that there's a couple of different lengths. Um, that must be more towards the bottom ones. Because everything that I got um, from basically from where the timing chain tensioner um, little hole, little inspection plate is up, they they're all, they're all seem to be the same. So, yeah, we're good there. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the bottom. Alright, so I finished up removing the bottom ones. There's three that go straight up from the bottom into the pan, from through the pan into the timing cover, and the other ones are those five there. They're all seemingly the same size. I think they may be the same size as the top ones, but I'm keeping them separated anyways. The three going through the pan are different sizes, and those are a real pain to get out because you can't get a ratchet in there. With one of them, I was able to get a ratchet with a swivel adapter in there. Uh, where is it? Right there. I was able to do that. It was not great, but I was able to get the one all the way to the left like that. With the other ones, I just had to use a 10 millimeter wrench right there and just do like a quarter turn at a time. Really sucked, but got it off. So I think that's all of them. I'm going to do a quick double check before I start prying at the thing, but that should be it. I think I read online there were 15, so we'll see. All right, so I'm kind of jumping all over the place. So I just got the chain out and comparing it to the new one, it's quite stretched. So hoping this fixes our problem because it definitely didn't seem like it was off, like it jumped or anything like that. So I'm hoping the stretch is the problem and there's a decent amount of stretch. So we'll see how this works out. Okay, so I just finished up cleaning it up and everything like that. Um, scraping off all the old gasket material that took a while on its own probably took longer to do that than a couple of the other steps um and i cleaned up the timing cover a little bit it's still dirty but i cleaned up all the oil residue and all that crap that was all over it scraped the mating surfaces as well you just used a razor as well as a um like a wire brush like a brass one so it's not gonna mar the surface or anything the new chain is in it's got it all lined up good and everything like that um scraped everything here as best as i could it's smooth to the touch. You can still see some of the old gasket on the edges, but there's not much really I can do with the limited space. What I probably should have done when the chain was out, un undid the guides and then cleaned it because it would have given me more room, but it's too late and I don't feel like taking it back out. So it should be fine. I'll just put a little bit of extra RTV in the spots that um, look like they might be problematic. And since it is going to be a little difficult sneaking that thing out because the way I got it out, it was banging on everything, I went ahead and removed the... Um, the tensioner, the belt tensioner and the idler pulley, the brackets and everything, I removed those there so I'm going to give me a lot more room here. I also unbolted the AC line here and just kind of pushed it upwards as well as the throttle cable line is up to the side so just going to give myself as much room as possible right here to work. So yeah, 
I'm gonna go ahead now and just double check, make sure I got all the big pieces of gasket off of everything. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the sealant around that and try to get it in. I'm gonna do a couple of practice runs get, getting it in without touching it, anything. Because obviously, if you smear the RTB, there's a chance of a leak, so definitely don't want that.